Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.4.1.4, Troubleshooting PPP with Authentication. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Connecting Networks Cisco RNS Version 6 Cisco Network and Academy curriculum. Now in this lab assignment, they've already configured some encapsulation uh, for PPP with CHAP authentication over top of it. Um, you should have already completed, hopefully, the configuring PPP encapsulation with CHAP and PAP authentication um, lab assignment previous to this one, hopefully, so you'll have that under your belt when you're looking for uh, these different troubleshooting steps. So um, the first thing they have you do is diagnose and repair any cabling issues. You could hover your mouse um, if we completed the first lab in this chapter troubleshooting serial interfaces that packet tracer had a few cabling issues so we want to make sure that the DCE end is correct the actual physical plugs are correct um, just because the label is there does not mean that the interfaces are correct but they look correct based off of uh, what I just did so hovering over making sure now the other thing you want to do is make sure that they are active. So let's go to, and it's Cisco and class are the passwords. Let's do a show run. So on R1, we've got two serial interfaces, serial 000 and 001. So we want to make sure that the IP addressing is correct. It looks like serial 000 is 172.16.0.1. And looks like it's got an incorrect mask here subnet mask it does need the clock rate on this interface and it says it's shut down so that is incorrect as well so let's go fix that let's fix them one interface at a time and then we'll come back to the other one so 000 on r1 we notice that it needs to type no shut okay we need to do that to turn it on it's not going to be on, on both ends yet because we got to make sure the other end is correct as well. Also, I'm going to do no, P, no IP add because I noticed the IP address was wrong. So I'm going to do IP add. Once I do no IP add, that clears it out. Then I'm going to add it back. 172.16.0.1, 255.255.255.252. It was previously configured as a .248, and that's incorrect. Okay. Now, I'm going to exit out of that interface. Let's go back to look at what was up with serial 001. Looks like the IP addressing is correct. Um, it looks like we also probably, even on that other one, wanted uh, PPP encapsulation. It says all the serial interfaces. So let's go back and do that as well. So um, before we leave serial 000, Go back to it really quickly. We want to do encapsulation PPP, okay? And then it says uh, we want to do all chap between them. So PPP authentication chap, okay? And we'll handle the usernames and passwords in a moment. Um, let's see, zero 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 one. We notice that's correct. The encapsulation is okay. Um, it has a clock rate, but it doesn't necessarily use that one because that's not the right end of the cable for it. Uh, but we do notice it's PPP authentication path. That's not right. It should say chat. And this should say uh, no shut, okay, instead of shutdown. So let's go into serial 001, and then we want to do no PPP authentication path PPP authentication chat then we're going to do um, no shut to turn that on okay but it's still going to be down but that's okay that just means we got to go to the other end so in summary interface serial 000 we had to correct the IP address we also had to put encapsulation PPP and PPP authentication chat serial 001 we had to take off the PAP authentication put on chap and do no shut okay now let's go to r2 cisco 
class, and let's do a show run. Okay, 0000, zero, zero, zero on R2. Let's make sure the IP addressing is correct. 172.16.0.2.252 encapsulation PPP, PPP authentication chat, but it did, still does say shut down. So let's go to interface serial. Zero, 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 and do a no shut. Okay, that turns that on. You also notice the link lights turn green here. Okay, so that's a good sign. That was the only thing I see here that was wrong. It's just that said shut down. Serial zero, zero, one is the one that goes over to R3 from R2. So that one says dot five is the IP address. Got the right subnet mask there. Um, it does need encapsulation PPP and PPP authentication chat, and it does need no shut type. So interface serial 001, we need encapsulation PPP, PPP authentication chat, whoops, and then no shut. Okay. Still going to be down though, because remember, you have to make sure the other end is configured correctly. So let's go over to R3 now. Cisco enable class. Let's do a show run. Okay. 0, 0, 0, 0 on R3 should be dot 10. 252. You notice it needs a lot there. It needs the PPP authentication, or sorry, CHAP authentication, PPP encapsulation, and no shut. So let's do that. Interface S000, uh, PPP, or NCAP, PPP, PPP authentication CHAP, and then no shut. Okay. Now let's look at the other interface it had. Interface 0001, it does not have an IP address, so we need to put one. We need to take off PAP and put on CHAP and do no shut. So interface S001, IP add is 172.16.0.6, 255.255.255.255. is a subnet mask. We need to do no PPP authentication PAP, but we do want PPP authentication chat, and then we need to do no shut. Okay, so let's do a show run one more time here just to make sure we got everything. So serial 000, okay. Serial 001. Let's go back over to R2. All right. And serial. Let's look at R1. And again, these are just for the serial interfaces. Okay. So you can kind of see what they should look like in the end for the serial overview of all of your routers, R1, R2, and so this is R1. This one is R2. And this one is R3. Okay. Now, a couple other things we notice is for the local area networks, right here, we don't have a, a green light, right? So we need to look at and survey G01 should be that interface. G01 has nothing configured. Everything is on G00, so that's actually incorrect. Um, let's make sure that it's plugged in the correct port. It says G01, so we want to go change that, okay? So we can just put no IP add on G00 because you will have to no IP add and then exit out. If you don't do no IP add, it won't let you assign it to G01. So then we do IP add 10.0.0.1, 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255
255.255.255.128 and no shut. Okay, to turn that on. So we had to take the IP address off of G00, put the right address 10.0.0.1 on G01 and type in no shut on R1. Now we need to check R3 over here. R3 is G01 as well, and it has the correct IP address. The subnet mask is wrong though, so we need to change that and then type in no shut. So interface G01, no IP add, IP add 10. 0.0.129, 255.255.255.128, no shut. Okay. Now, let us check the PCs. Okay, PC1 looks okay. PC3. Okay, that looks all right. All right, so now let's check uh, R2. That one's got a gigabit G01 interface. G01, it actually has nothing configured. So let's go configure that for R2. So interface G01, IP add 209.165.200.161, 255.255.255.224, and then no shut. Okay. Now the last thing we got to do is back on the encapsulations, or sorry, the PAP. The CHAP authentication, we're not using PAT, we're using CHAP, we need to go make sure we have the username set up correctly for each of our three routers. So we need to put the username of the, um, of the, we need to put the username of the routers so that we can authenticate properly. So what we need to put in here is the usernames of each other router that's going to be authenticating. Um, so on R1, we'll actually do a username for R2 and R3. On R2, we'll do a username for R1 and R3. For R3, we'll do a username for R1 and R2. Make sense? All right, so let's see what it wants us to use as the passwords here. It says use Cisco for all the passwords. So we're on R1 now, so I'm going to do username. R2. Um, I don't know if they want us to use the word secret or password. Let's see. All right, so let's use, let's just try secret Cisco. All right, so let's see what they got actually configured because they may have it. Uh, let's see. Should be right here. So on R1, they've got username, R2, password, Cisco. Okay, so let's set up for R3. Maybe they just want us to use um, password. It, it's fine either way. It just shows you what's there. If they didn't, then we probably wouldn't be able to see what's there to troubleshoot it. So that's probably why they use the word password there. But we do need one for username R3 because they've already got R2 there. Password, Cisco. Okay, so now when we do a show run, All right, see we've got on R1 a username for R2 and a username for R3, okay? If we would've used Cisco, or sorry, secret here instead of the word password, it wouldn't have showed us what our password is, so we wouldn't have known if it was correct or not for the troubleshooting lab. Okay, so let's go to R2. Username, see this one says R, this is on R2. We, we got, both of these are incorrect. Um, they say R11 and R3. That's definitely not right for either one. So let's actually copy both of those and do a no. No, paste, 
hit enter, and then no username R3. Think add a password of um, class. I'm sorry, here we gotta go back here. Take that zero out there. Okay, when you copy and paste it, it puts that zero there, um, but we don't want that. So just do no username R3 password class, no username R11 password Cisco. Now we're going to put our right ones in here. Username R1 password Cisco, username R3 password Cisco. Okay, and you'll start to see some connections being made because it can authenticate. Okay. And do a show run just one more time to make sure your usernames are correct now, and they are. Now let's go to R3. Do show run. Looks like we've got username R1 password Cisco, but we don't have one for R2. So let's do username R2 password Cisco. Hit enter and boom we've got it all right so we got 100 out of 100 there so in summary we had to make sure that every interface had that right stuff the right ip address the right subnet mask that no shut was typed or it was on basically um, as well as encapsulation ppp and ppp authentication chat you should have seen that under every serial interface we had to go to the gigabit internet gigabit ethernet interfaces the g01s and make sure each one of those were configured with the right IP address the right subnet mask and then that they were turned on because some of times it was configured under the incorrect one then we had to go make sure that the usernames and passwords for chat was set up correctly okay and then we had to make sure that the end devices were configured correctly as well that got us to a hundred out of a hundred so that shows you how to troubleshoot multiple issues, not with just the serial interfaces, but with authentication and encapsulation as well. That concludes Packet Tracer Assignment 2.1.4, Troubleshooting PPP with Authentication.